Send All it. Right. All right, we're recording just like that. I don't even know what the hell we're going to call this thing. Any suggestions? Dang, we don't have a name. But no, what the hell? I kind of thought we had a name. Well, we should put our, all of our names together and make like a, a name for it. Like a yeah. like an acronym. Well, initially I was like it should be Alec Danny John because that's alphabetical, you know. Oh. So I don't know, but I like Danny first. I don't Alec. I don't think Alec first. It should be Danny first. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> What, whatever works. Dinalon. I'm gonna let you guys pick. Denalon. Den Dan Denalon. Denalon. You know, Dinalon. as as much trouble as the two of you guys had logging those microphones in, I'm not sure I'm gonna let you pick the name. I think I'm just gonna come up <laughs> yeah. with something. <laughs> and, that we're, works. <laughs> and we're gonna roll with it. But I appreciate you guys doing this. It's gonna be fun, I think. People want to know all about your lives. As Amazing. boring as, as boring as they may be. Yeah. <laughs> they, I mean, I'm honest, like we have to do something because this microphone is legit. Isn't it? This thing is a piece of equipment. <laughs> so true, <laughs> true story. When we were, uh, Nikki and I did a show for Under Armour. We were in uh, Baltimore. This is like a month before the pandemic, right? And we're in Baltimore and she, I forget why I was going to her room for something, but I went up there to get something and I come in and she's got a mic just like that one, but she had a sock rolled over it and it looked like a monster dildo. And I'm like, Nikki, I'm like, what the hell is that thing? <laughs> Funniest thing you've ever seen. Well, this is what I was about to say. I was like, it definitely looks like, you know, I'm just, I've got a mounted penis just in my face. Right now. <laughs> like, look at this thing. <laughs> it's just here. Well, that was kind of, that was kind of the whole point of getting you guys together on the show. I'm hoping for a lot of hits as you guys just lean in, just back and forth into the microphone like this. It's going to be great. <laughs> be a big hit on YouTube, not so much on the audio channels, but we'll... <laughs> We'll see how that goes. I on that uh, topic, I'm really impressed how you guys have both gone in on the foot money with this toe spacer company. I keep noticing a little ads going out there. So good for you. Have you used them yet? You know what? They have been begging me to use those things, and I'm like, hell no, absolutely not. They <laughs> they stalked me straight up, stalked me at the CrossFit Games, like <laughs> literally found me in the Coliseum and chased me down and gave me some. I'm like, I'm not. I am not putting my feet on the internet i'm not doing it like that's <laughs> that's the to, line you don't that's have to fine. post about it but just like you can wear them at home <laughs> do, do they work alec i mean i've been using for a couple months and my feet feel great i don't know if like you guys know about my super tight ankles and my really tight calves and i hate running because of it but i swear they have been helping i think everyone wants to know about your tightness um <laughs> no seriously they work Cause it seems like voodoo to me. Like I always, anytime I go to like a chiropractor or a PT or somebody gives me something like that, I'm like, it's voodoo. There's no way that works. I mean, if, even if it's mental, it's working for me. Danny, does it work for you? Or is it just about getting the, the crazy DMS? No, I actually, well, I, the first time, the first time I used it, uh, I was with Alec. And I put the little things in between my toes and I actually really liked it. And you know me, I've been like really <laughs> against putting my feet on the internet, but then I was like, well, <laughs> yeah, you got to give the people what they want eventually. <laughs> uh, but I actually really like how they've made my feet feel. And I kind of hate to admit it, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was like, You're like I one of them I not to feel like, good. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I hope I hate this thing. So I don't have to like post anything. <laughs> and I was like, mm, all right, I really like this. <laughs> This is the dumbest topic I've ever brought up on any show because this is totally unsponsored. I'm not making a cent off this. So you guys need to go back and renegotiate your contracts for talking about this <laughs> on the air. But I just, yeah, I mean, I just like officially signed with them. So it's good publicity, I guess. All right. Well, I just feel like I see people constantly posting. And then when it happens, you know me, like I can't help myself. I have to go into the comments and see who's posting. And it's always like, there's so many people and they're yeah. saying the craziest shit. You know, those Ooh. are just the public ones. Those aren't, those aren't like the private DMs. <laughs> oh, how many private yeah. DMs do you get from them? Uh, quite a bit. Just like, yeah. it's the same stuff. It's not like anything super creepy, but just like people saying like, oh, hot feet or whatever it is. I'm like, oh. I, yeah. <laughs> Alec, I had someone ask me, they were like, do we get a picture of your feet if we use your code? And I was like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, you send me a Venmo. We'll, we'll discuss. <laughs> 
how, how just estimate Alec, how many a week are you getting? How many crazy D and not even just foot DMs. Like how many crazy DMs a week do you get? Um, it depends on like how active I am with my story. If I'm like constantly posting a lot, I'll get more, but uh, I don't know. It, over, over a hundred, 200 a week. Jesus. Yeah. Danny, what about you? Danny, you gotta be worse. Every time she's, I see your story. probably 10 like, times that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably, I'm probably getting like a hundred to 150 a day. Yeah. I'm, you, like having, I'm having to go through my DMs and like do the mass delete all the time. <laughs> you like to tease people though. You kind of like tease people about it. <laughs> so, so by percentage then, Danny, of these people DMing you, how many are married men? Oh, a disgusting amount. Like, <laughs> like ridiculous. I think if we, yeah, I, I think if I just look at it, because it's mostly men. I get some weird ones from women, uh, but not as many. But I think of the men that I get in my DMs, probably a good 30% are definitely married. 50% have kids in their fucking profile picture. And I'm like, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> like, so it's, it'll be so weird looking at a DM and it's just like something really disgusting about all sorts of things that this guy wants to like do. And then I just, you know, you just kind of scroll up to like that left and he's just like in the picture with his twin babies and you're right. like, oh, nice. <laughs> just awesome role model. Love that there are men like that in the world. I, I love it when... Uh, you, you're just dropping names. Like when they piss you off enough, you're just like, oh, here's at Joe Bob 69 and like his whole profile out to the world. I'm like, you go, Danny. <laughs> I usually don't do it. Cause like, I, I don't believe in, cause I know, I know people will go and send that person messages and I'm not about like ruining someone's day, but there'll just be days where I wake up and I'm in a mood and I'll get the wrong message. And I'm like, well, all right. Charles, your life's over. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> what What are the weird ones from women you're getting? Are they the same like same theme, um, or is it different? No, it's never it's never as vulgar from women. It's usually like hatred from women. It's like you know you're not like it's always like moms that are like mad. And it was just I get things like. I was so happy that, you know, my children looked up to you or whatever, but like, then you went and had to like show your ass on the internet. And now I just like, don't even want them looking at your page. And I'm like, well, your son's in my DM. So like, shut up. Like, <laughs> like, and I just, I, it's always, it's like things like that. Like when, women are either like really encouraging or they're just so against everything that I do. And I, it's like always that, like, it's just polar opposite. And mm -hmm like men are always like I get like awesome stuff from men all the time but like they get gross like women don't get gross they just get like you're not feminine enough like you're not you're not you're not, you're not doing the things that are going to get respect for women and I'm like all right well I don't know like what you want like what that is supposed to mean that I just like don't stay in the kitchen that I'm not like in a turtleneck I just you know, there's some girl, like, there's some women you just can't ever please you should do a yeah. whole week of nothing but turtleneck posts. <laughs> oh my God, that, that gives me anxiety. I'd rather do a whole week of feet posts. <laughs> like, a turtleneck? Oh, that makes me cringe. <laughs> well, what about you, Alex? So you're getting just as, I mean, you're getting quite a few. Are you get any hate DMs like along these lines for people thinking you're not enough of a role model or what are yours coming at you like? I, I don't really get like the whole role model DMs, just like a lot of homophobic ones where just like, that's like the most popular one is just like emojis of people vomiting because they can't stand looking at two guys kissing. It's like just like dumb ones like that. Never anything that's like you should be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. It's just like usually guys that are like roided out, just like super homophobic ones. But other than that, nothing like super hateful. Yeah, well, I've I always get in trouble for cheating on Alec. Like they're like, I can't believe, I can't believe you're like doing that to that sweet boy. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> well, that was the long, for the longest time, like probably when I first met Alec and knew him, I would constantly get DMs from people them going, is he dating Brooke? Whatever girl he was in a photo with. I yeah. somebody would met because they knew I knew him and they'd be like, is he dating Brooke? See who else would be in your phone? It'd be you sometimes. <laughs> yeah i forget there's who else people, it was she was like people love to just pretend like they just want to know everything and they do yeah. they see one photo and they're like i know his life story let me tell you <laughs> like okay. people just love the drama 
Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, there was a point where like Danny, Brooke, and Jess like all knew years before it was like publicly posted or anything. So we would just like joke around with people and like post pictures just to get people upset. <laughs> <laughs> like, those, those were the days. Might as well. <laughs> like, people well, really care that much, whatever. Yeah. I used to get DMs all the time that were like, did you steal Alec from Brooke? And I'm like, sniped him. I got him. Yes, I did. <laughs> Just go with it. <laughs> oh man, people hated me. <laughs> well, if you ever they were wanna... so mad at me for stealing Alec away from Brooke. I was like, oh, I know. I just, you know, the heart wants what the heart wants. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you my favorite pastime for you, Alec. And if anybody wants to do this, it's a lot of fun. Wait for Alec to post anything on twitter but especially if it's a photo <laughs> in like a speedo and then just go into the comments go into the subtweet <laughs> it is the best you got to know your audience it's like instagram and twitter are two completely different platforms like yeah i don't know I, I get more engagement on twitter than i do on instagram and i've got four times the amount of followers on instagram it's just like i don't know you have to you have to know your audience people are very thirsty on twitter Dude, those dudes on Twitter love you. And then they, they tell you exactly what they want to do with you too. They are very clear, very clear. Yeah. We should just have a, we should have a whole show where all we do is we just go back and forth and read like Alex comments in his Twitter. We'll just go around <laughs> Robin. We'll just read them all. It would be a very long podcast. First, yeah. first of all, we'd have to mark it as explicit. That'd be the first thing we'd have to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gay men are very direct. I, that's the first thing I figured out. I like, I read a couple. I'm like, oh my, don't know what that is. Don't know what that is. Never seen that. But, oh, I know that. Okay, there you go. It was, uh, yeah. Yep. Wait, what's the term that you didn't know, John? Oh, uh, it's well, I, I kind of knew everything, but. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, you know, but I, I'm like going through one and some guy's like, I want to DP with you. And I'm like, oh, he likes Dr. Pepper. That's so nice. That's so sweet. I love soda too. <laughs> it's soda. never anything nice. Never. Or never anything friendly or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's never. What church do you go to, Alec? It's never that. <laughs> never. Nope. never. Not on Twitter. Wait, I'm lost. <laughs> I still love What's it. DP? <laughs> <laughs> that you know can what? be for another podcast. <laughs> message, <laughs> message me privately. <laughs> I told you, Tell Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Totally Google. Dr. Pepper. If, so if my mom happens to watch this, do not together. Google that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so mm. Alec, I, Riley was just in a room a few minutes ago. How long have you guys been together? Um, so it'll be two years in February. Wow. So, Time flies. Yeah. I know. Almost two years. It <sighs> feels like a lot longer. Like it, it feels like 10 years but that's probably a good sign right <laughs> well I was gonna, that's gonna be my follow it, question it could go either way <laughs> yeah. yeah it'd be really good or really bad <laughs> <laughs> two years but so much longer than that jesus it's terrible <laughs> holy no, shit I think it'd be good yeah, it's been... <laughs> <laughs> and now you guys you guys just bought a house together right yeah we moved in about three months ago now um, so yeah, we're living back home in uh, Chesapeake, Virginia, where my family's from. And I've got like three nieces here and it's been really, really fun. Just like seeing them grow up. I, I was like watching them grow up through like Instagram and like Facebook and stuff. And I was like, I need to be home. <laughs> like, I, and like watching them say their first words or like walking or whatever. I was like, I need to be there for that. But yeah, it's been great being home. Was, uh, was the prerequisite that noble wall behind you? You're like, gotta have, gotta yeah, have a room with the noble wall. <laughs> yeah. I've always wanted like a shoe wall and I was like this is the perfect time I've got like four bedrooms we only need one of them so I was like I've got too many shoes and yeah so I just threw that wall up it was really easy it took only like 30 minutes but it took longer to like pick out the colors of like where I wanted the colors to go that probably took like three hours so I was like I don't know <laughs> like I can't decide <laughs> you, you put in your story the other day from some dude was like you, you're buying too many pairs of shoes. Why do you buy so many? I'm sitting there going, he sponsored you, asshole. Like, what do you think he's yeah. buying these nobles? Like, yeah, so you guys get to see my um, my close friend story. I'll put like DMs on my close friend story of just like the most absurd things that people say. But yeah, one of them was like, I don't even remember what he said. He was like, you need to stop buying so many shoes. Like that money could be going to like other things. I'm like, I don't buy these shoes like <laughs> i wouldn't be buying Sorry. this many shoes <laughs> like if, first of all like you shouldn't be telling me what i should and shouldn't do with my money but second of all these are not shoes that i buy <laughs> oh, like people... that would be 
a lot of money. People love to tell you what to do with your own money. They love yeah. to do that. I, so my, I got the same message. You know, I posted something about all the shoes and like, oh, you shouldn't buy so many shoes. You should donate it to charity. I'm like, well, first of all, I'm not buying them. They're being given to me at this point. Mm -hmm. Total flex. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, but then I did, but then I started thinking, I'm like, all right, well, maybe I should donate some. So, you know, I donated some because I don't mm -hmm. need that many. And now Danny and I are team innovate. So team shout innovate. out, yeah. shout out. <laughs> I, I have so many, I have like this, I want to make a shoe wall so bad, but I would need like eight walls. <laughs> <laughs> you should. It's so convenient. You literally walk in the room. You're like, what color shirt am I wearing? Boom. Grab the shoe. <laughs> how many how many pairs do you have danny yeah this is where i'm gonna get you don't need that many shoes i probably right now i have i have over 50 easily of just like innovates i love them because i i'll like ask them like i'll find a pair that i like and i'll be like send me five mm -hmm. so i don't have to keep <laughs> so right. i have the one the current ones that i'm wearing and then like four backups and then i have like colorways of like the ones I really like and then like three backups for when they get because I like I go through shoes like I find ones that I really like and I wear them out like pretty fast and so I have to my ankles and my feet are like total shit so as soon as like the insoles or get any kind of like they flatten out or they just get kind of like loose and they're not like as tight on my feet anymore and I gotta like they start just hurting. So I got to go. And that's been with shoes my entire life. I had like these flat hobbit feet. I'm going to, I'm going to clip out that entire section. We talked about how tight your feet were and just sell it to pervs. That's my plan. <laughs> there we go. You did the true story. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, uh, this is the difference between a true sponsored innovate athlete. And when you're quote unquote sponsored, like me, you're like, Hey, send me five. I'm like, Hey, send me some shoes. They're like, you'll get what you get, buddy. All right. <laughs> It'll show Wait, up when it shows prefer. up, whatever color gets there, gets there, you know? <laughs> oh man, man. Oh man. That's like another thing that I get is I think a lot of people, I don't think they get the concept of being like an athlete for some of these brands. And so I always, I get asked all the time, like, are, like, I, I got straight up asked, they're like, do you, are you a prostitute? Like, how do you make money? And I was like, well, oh, that was a, that was a stretch. <laughs> like, like, don't just have like a regular job. No, it must be prostitution. <laughs> I was like, sweet. <laughs> um, and so I, I get asked that all the time is like, people are just like, how are you like making money and buying all these things? And I'm like, well, I'm pretty lucky with a lot of these brands, like, like the shoe brands, they send you stuff, but I do, I get, I get asked that all the time. Alex, do you get asked that? Like how yeah. do you make money? Whenever I do like Q and A's or whatever on like stories, that's probably yeah. the number one question. Just like, how do you make money? Like, what do you do for a living? Um, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm it's so hard. It's to... like, I feel almost guilty. I'm just like this, this is, yeah. this is what I do. <laughs> but I mean, we, we also have worked super hard for it too. I don't think people realize like the years of work we've put into like becoming yeah. the athletes we are today, you know, and people just like see the now and they don't see what has led up to like where, like how we got here, you know, how many, but, I think how many hours a week do you work out currently? Me? Yeah. Or um, both of you. Probably like four a day, five days a week. So 20. Wow. Well, yeah. it, it, throwing mobility with that though, it's significantly more than 20 or are you counting mobility in that or not in yeah. that? No, I, I will spend like an hour a day mobilizing whether it be like before workouts or at night before I go to bed like I, my mobility is terrible so like if I don't spend the time doing it like it's even Pain. worse <laughs> <Pain>. <laughs> yeah. what about you Danny how much are you doing it same I probably spend five five hours a day five days a week and then like three hours on Saturday so I'm right around that a little bit more um just just mobilizing right just mobilizing, just, yeah. yeah, just my, just mobilizing my feet, actually. <laughs> All about those feet. <laughs> All about the feet. Uh, about and the feet. then, uh, of course, like mobility afterwards and then body work. Like, that's like another thing is I think 
people forget that there's so much body work that goes into it. And it's not like going and just getting like a hot stone massage and just laying there and like totals in. Like people are digging into your IT bands and your psoas and it's like painful. Like I'm crying every week. <laughs> I'm crying every week. <laughs> so it's great. <laughs> and I have to still go and do PT work for my ankle and I still do PT work for my shoulder. And so it's it's definitely like a full-time job, like a lot, a lot of hours, like more than 40 hours a week for sure. Well, then how much time are you guys spending? You know, like people don't think these sponsorships are work, but like you have to do photos. Like you just did a photo shoot, Danny, with uh, Born Primitive, I think, if I'm remembering yeah. right. Like four days, what, all day thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like how much time do you guys think you're spending monthly, like having to do this sort of stuff for whoever, whoever the sponsor is? I mean, there's, there's hours of every single day where you're trying to like create content and taking videos, taking photos, like trying to figure out like posting schedules emails from brands saying like this, you know, like this sale is about to go on, this launch is about to go on, this product is coming out. And so it's like, you know, in between training, you're always checking your emails, saying like what you're going to have to do for brands and if they need to schedule something or if they're sending out a photographer, if you have to fly somewhere. And so, yeah, it's, it's definitely like, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot of work. It's definitely not just like a walk in the park. So how frustrating is it for the two of you? Because it sounds like you have people out there going, what do you do for a little, like you work or do you consider that work? You know, like how frustrating does that become when, you know, it sounds like you're putting in 50, 60 hours a week between the workouts and the sponsors and, you know, the social media and all that stuff. Is it frustrating? Not frustrating. Have you learned to deal with it? Like, how's it feel? I think it's like anything else. Like, you know, you just learn to deal with the hate that comes like through social media. But for me, I just, I kind of, it kind of just like rolls off at this point. Like everything just kind of like rolls off is like, you can laugh at it. You can sky, you're like, oh, whatever. But you know, I, I enjoy my life so much. And so I just try not to give any of these people like the time of day. I get too many, I honestly get too many good messages to really give the bad ones any thought, but I will post like, you know, just the ones that are like super funny, but I really, I post, you know, less than 5% of like the bad ones that I get. And so I just, it's just about, you know, filtering those out. But like I said, I get too much love to really focus on the hate. What about you, Alan? Yeah, no, same exact thing. Like it, it used to bother me at first, like when I first started doing CrossFit and like posting stuff, um, but it just like rolls past you. Don't even like think about it anymore. There's just like so many of them, just like, if you let it bother you, then you're just like spending your whole day frustrated and <laughs> there's no Literally. point. In, there's no point in living your life worried about what other people think. Well, Alec, you're starting a new thing. So you're doing this new um, program with your brothers, right? Yeah, we just started um, an at-home programming. So Dane's had Dane and Ben have had um, at bro at-home programming for a little over a year now. And since I moved back home, I am incorporating gymnastics programming with their programming. So you get an at-home workout, a gymnastics workout, a core workout, and an endurance workout every day. So like, if you want to wake up and you're like, oh, I want to do gymnastics today, you get to pick and choose like that workout. Or if you want to do an endurance workout, you get to choose that workout. If you want to do like a fit workout, it's like dumbbells, stuff you can do in your garage. You get to like pick that workout too. So it's been really fun. We like get together every Sunday, we shoot videos and like go over workouts and tutorials and like video movements and stuff like that. So it's been fun, like being able to start a little business with them and like work with your brothers and yeah I'm really enjoying it so far we've only we started like about a week and a half two weeks ago and it's going really really well how's uh how you liking being around the twins I saw a video with you oh. the other day it was like the cutest thing ever yes they're the best oh, like, <laughs> yeah uh, they they have my heart like I would do anything for them um they're about to turn two years old so they're like at that phase where they're like kind of putting words and sentences together and like they have that like goofy little wobble run when they like try to run and uh, oh, they're the cutest yeah, <laughs> yeah. literally and, um, how i still run I, mean, I never grew out of that <laughs> <laughs> but it's been good we have like a bunch of land at the house that i have and our next door neighbors used to uh run a petting zoo so they don't run the petting zoo anymore but they kept the animals so we have like alpacas and donkeys and horses so we'll just like take the twins over so we'll just like feed and pet the horses and they love it it's so fun that's awesome yeah. how's uh how's dane handling the fact they're almost as tall as him now 
<laughs> they really oh, are. Sure. They're like in the 99th percentile for height, like for their age. And I'm like, I don't know where they got that height from because it wasn't Dane and Emily. So maybe it's like dang skips and generations. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is, but yeah, they were born like three months early. So they were really, really small when they were born, but now they're like doing really, really good. But yeah, did not get their height from Dane and Emily. <laughs> I, I shouldn't make fun of it. If there's a Smith brother that could roast me fast, it would be Dane. That dude is funny. Yeah. He is really, yeah. really funny. <laughs> Yeah, he definitely got like the. He's funny winning gene for sure. Yeah, he gets yeah. the funny gene. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he missed his calling. Every every once in a while, he, like he posts memes and they're really good. And I always hesitate to mm-hmm. tell him they're good because I don't want him to take my job. So just, uh, <laughs> you suck. <laughs> yeah, those are terrible. Don't post that again. But I'll. You should stop that. Yeah, yeah, he's like a full time firefighter now, and they do like the the three days on, four days off, or like whatever whatever it is. So when they don't have calls, he'll just like be at the station like putting memes together or like doing programming or whatever it is so yeah he's really really funny <laughs> dude i don't know how you're finding time for all this because you got besides crossfit training and your endorsements and your major twitter following and now you're <laughs> now your brother thing you're also tra- danny said your you're brother thing tri- yeah you're doing triathlon now too is that right yeah so i did one a couple weeks ago and then I have one scheduled for December now in Florida. Um, and I'm actually working with like a triathlon specific coach. Um, like I'm still doing CrossFit and stuff, but like the triathlon training is really, really hard, but it's like definitely helped me in the CrossFit area too. Like at my endurance feels great, like during workouts where it like normally doesn't, but um, yeah, I like to stay busy. Like if, if I don't have something to do, I kind of like get into my head or like get down or like sad or like whatever it is so like if I don't have something to do then I just like find myself not as happy as I am when I'm doing something if that makes sense yeah so I kind of like try to stay as busy as I can but uh, it's like a good busy I just assumed you were sitting around going what community could I show my abs to (laughs) (laughs) all of of CrossFit seen them so I've got to find a different one gotta find a new tribe (laughs) the thing is though like Honestly, I don't wear a t-shirt 95% of the time that I'm like it, like in my house, I never have clothes on, like at the gym, my shirt's always off. So it's like, when I have pictures or videos being taken, it's like very rare. I can, that I I can verify that statement. <laughs> Dude, this is the, this is the fourth time. I think you've been on the air with me and the first time you've worn a shirt and that's no lie. <laughs> Did I really, was I shirtless yeah, before? You were absolutely oh, shirtless, <laughs> at least on the last one. <laughs> Yeah, it's all right. We all enjoyed it. I have I have <laughs> two photos with Alex too, and in neither are you wearing a shirt. <laughs> Lucky, yeah. Wow. Actually, I I think I actually don't. The only picture I have with shirts on with Alex is in Dubai when we were forced to wear clothing. <laughs> That's about we, it. Okay, we have one in New York when we when we went out in New York that one night. Oh, that's true. I was the one that was half naked that night. <laughs> I think I, I think I remember that night from your stories if I'm thinking about it properly. Yeah, we went mm-hmm. to see Lizzo. Mm-hmm. Yes, I definitely remember that. <laughs> Such a good night. Is she coming so back sad. around? Live music's a thing again. Is she coming back around? I hope so. She like dropped a new single and then I thought she was going to like drop a new album but never did, so I don't know. I know. Dude, Adele's new single is the shit Dude, Adele's new body can we talk about how she <laughs> looks great <laughs> holy shit Dude, <laughs> she well, did the damn thing I gotta be like I don't listen to a lot of Adele it's like it's not really my thing but I'm sitting around in my car the other night I'm waiting on one of my kids to come out and my youngest had mentioned her new album was dropping along the same time as a, as a Taylor Swift song and mm. so it was just on my mind and, and Megan loves Taylor Swift and Adele and so I'm like, I'll listen to it. And I damn near got emotional. It was so good. <laughs> Dude, I love crying with Adele. I'll oh, be in my so car good. just sobbing. Yeah. I love it's like it. sad girl fall. Here we come. Oh, yes. I was it. having a sad girl <laughs> moment. It was so good. <laughs> oh, I so love good. it. And Taylor Swift just, I don't know if this is her, I don't keep up with like album drops, but she did some stuff with um, Bon Iver or Bon Iver. People say it differently whatever but she did a collab with him and it was great i was also crying with her stuff oh her stuff can't great. emotional women right now <laughs> well see i have two emotional women in my house so we uh we just took a long car trip and meg the youngest loves taylor swift so we had an we had an entire taylor swift playlist that was basically just her entire catalog on shuffle you know so i heard it all it's great it's good stuff 
It's and not, I, I honestly, I gave, I gave T Swift a lot of hate when she first started. I didn't like a lot of her <laughs> stuff, but she's grown up proud of that little girl. She's doing yeah. good. She's a big girl. Think she's younger than me. Just killing it in the world. <laughs> Sweet. She really, I think so. I like she, I think she is like 27, right? Yeah. So that sounds right. 26, 27. Oh, she can't God. snatch for shit though. That's a fact. <laughs> True. <laughs> You'll crush her. <laughs> Absolutely crush. What what live music do you guys want to see next now that it's backing out? Um, I'm actually going to EDC Las Vegas next weekend. So I'm really? like super excited. Yeah, I've never been to like a legit music festival. You're going to be an hour away from me and you're not going to yeah. come see me? Do you want to come? No. You should come. Come with us just for like one day. When is it? That would be so fun. No, next, you should come like, too. <laughs> I literally, I leave Thursday night and I get there. Yeah, I get there Thursday night and there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday like this thursday mm -hmm. i could take a trip to vegas you should oh my gosh that'd be so hey, fun you can stay with me soon bitch <laughs> <laughs> you, i love you, this i let the last time i was in vegas was for uh the competition and i think i left with a contact high because so many people were smoking weed out there it was just like on every street corner mm -hmm. it's legal i left with right? a heat stroke so oh my gosh you got their better into the deal <laughs> yeah Oh, yeah, so you had a couple couple people did almost have heat stroke at that one, didn't they? Like I, uh, I think I mean two girls, I think two girls actually did. Like they withdrew. Like they legitimately got heat stroke. I was I was super lucky that I couldn't run fast enough to give heat stroke. I just got <laughs> heat exhaustion. You're like, thank God I'm a shitty runner. This is great. <laughs> or else I would be dead. <laughs> yeah. So I there are definitely girls that um I think one, like one girl was really like, she had to go to the hospital and like, get it was Christine like, best. Right. Wasn't it Christine? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, mm -hmm. you know, it was, that was a whole shitty thing. I'm not really sure why we were running in that heat, but there's like, and see, like, that's a, that's a thing that I've like talked with a couple people about is I think there are some times like in a CrossFit competition where it's become like, how much can we like, not about like finding the fittest, but like how much can we make them suffer? Like, it's like, we're like little gladiators and they're like, oh, like if they die, they die. And like, I get, I get it. There's like some points where you need to like be able to test like mental, like fortitude and all this kind of stuff. But there, there have been some moments where I'm like, this just seems like a little dangerous. And like when people were getting heat stroke and Murph that year, I thought it was crazy that they brought back Murph, even though it was a different time of day. And I honestly think that year, well, when 2020, the year that only five people went to the ranch, the, that last workout that they did, like the Murph Mary combination, right. and they did like 300 vested pull-ups at the end of the entire CrossFit games. I was like, eh, he just wants someone to break his shoulder. So there, there's just like some times where I'm like, I just, so I don't really. Why don't you guys unionize? Y'all, well, we tried that and people got selfish and still wanted to compete. So there's that <laughs> what's, what's, we, was, we gave it a go <laughs> well I, I so i talked to an athlete about this this week uh, a retired athlete but an athlete nonetheless and we, so we started talking about athletes union and it's crazy to me for this exact reason i didn't mean for us to talk about this tonight but it seems nuts that any event can put you through something like that run in the desert heat and there are no ramifications to that other than to the athlete themselves yeah i mean the whole sport it's just kind of like, you know, you see any other, you know, quote unquote professional sport and they get paid just to be an athlete yet, you know, you're asking all these athletes to work full-time jobs and then pay their own way to go to a competition. And, you know, someone like that who has to withdraw just pays like all this money to do nothing. And then there are so many people like at the CrossFit games, they paid to get to the CrossFit games and they couldn't compete because of COVID wearing like all these like you know bullshit regulations and then it's just it's just it's not right I don't think you should be you know not taking care of these people who are like giving their bodies and a lot of their time to compete in this sport and you know give people entertainment and away you know every other professional sport like they get paid they have more opportunities to make money and not only hi bean <laughs> um and now look at your face. <laughs> uh, and so not only are athletes, you know, not getting paid by, you know, the foundation that is CrossFit, but they're also, they just stripped away like all these sanctioned events where people have more opportunity to go make money. Like those were events where people could go and make some real cash. And now we've got 
you know, both Rogue and Dubai that did invite only, no qualifier. And like, those are the two biggest payouts essentially. And now if you get invited to go to that, I think it's absolute shit. It's like making it so if you're not already established in the sport and you're not already like getting paid by brands, you have no chance of becoming a professional athlete right. in this space. So it's just giving like this whole entire restructure just gave the middle finger to everybody who wants to make this a livelihood. I'm pissed. <laughs> I didn't get that impression at all, Danny. So you know, don't worry. No one's going to think. That. I just know. I just know so many people who really wanted to give it a run and they needed more opportunity to showcase their talent and they need more opportunity just to like be in the public eye and to be able to go to a brand and be like, look at how many competitions I did look at all of these stats like this is why you should pay me and put me you know like on your brand and no one's getting those opportunities anymore and especially now like if you get injured right at the beginning of the season like it's over at least with sanctioned events like you could recover from an injury and still make it to the crossfit games at this point it's just like it's done and that just sucks it just sucks why don't the agents take this up as a cause you guys both have agents I, uh, I just signed with like a management group that I'm really happy with, um, a fellow group. I'm working with Andrew Stallings. I really, really like and respect him, but I, for the longest time, didn't. So I don't know too much about that space and like everyone who could kind of band together. I know that like when the whole Greg Glassman thing was going on and everyone was revolting and rioting in the streets crossfit what like there were people i know loud and live was gonna try to like branch off and like create something else and i think people tried but people just the athletes got too scared and they wanted to compete at the crossfit games and so we just we stuck with the crossfit brand and we were happy when just greg glassman left and everyone just kind of forgot everything else we were working towards I just when I like hanging out with Danny because she literally just says everything that I think and then I don't have to say anything. <laughs> He's like your little puppet. <laughs> <laughs> He's over there pulling the strings. Like, I'm He's actually Alex just texting Smith. me everything. I'm just reading a text. <laughs> I'm Alex Smith and I endorse this message. <laughs> literally. Um, well, I just wonder, like, I mean, you know, I don't know. I'm certainly no lawyer, but I always wonder why you can't take an O'Keefe and Snorri and, you know, all these guys that are managing all the top athletes and band them together and, you know, put the type, you know, put the screws to CrossFit and say, Hey, protect our athletes. Let's quit having events where we're hurting people. Now, admittedly, one of those guys ran the event that was, had the heat stroke in it. So maybe that's why, but, <laughs> but I mean, seriously, I mean, doesn't it seem, it just seems weird to me that we would, you know, you would risk the top athletes or any athlete for that matter, for the sake of a game, you know, I don't know. I think it's just become part of the sport. Like, it's almost like, you know, look at these athletes, like, like, look what they can do. Like, look what we can make them do. But I just, I know I'm never going to be on board with athletes not being taken care of. Um, it just, it sucks. And like I said, like they tried, they really did. And we've got some great minds in the sport that if they really wanted to band together, they could have made it happen. But like I said, there are some athletes who literally just, I think they, we, a lot of us just focus on the wrong thing. We wanted to go to the CrossFit games. We wanted to be crowned fittest on earth, which if they had created like another like off thing to be able to pay the athletes and they, they, they wanted to structure it in a way to where we could get paid, we could get taken care of, we could do the pro cards and you know, you go to the games like, th like three years and all these kind of, you could get injured. Like it was great. Like the structure was awesome, but we couldn't call it the CrossFit games we couldn't crown the fittest on earth. We'd have to call it something else. And people just, they got into their head and they're like, no, like I've worked my entire life to go to the CrossFit games. And it was just, it's just like one of those things where, you know, that like tiny brick got pulled out. It's like Jenga, the wrong motherfucking block got pulled and everyone just crumbled. And then yeah. Alex like, screw it. I'm going to do a triathlon. Screw you guys. Yeah. <laughs> he just left to be beautiful somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, it is but it is totally bizarre to me i i think what you guys need if you know i don't take my life advice because i'm a total fuck up but if i were giving life advice here go find some retired athletes i think the problem with your plan before was the athletes that were putting it together are actively competing mm -hmm. 
my opinion. And you can't have an, someone actively competing also speaking on behalf of the athletes because they want to win that prize just like everybody else. They're biased. Like even if it's, you know, they don't even realize they're biased. You know, they just are. You, just, you can't help it. It's human nature. You need somebody who's retired that believes in you. Like a Scott Pancheck's a great selection, by the way. You know, <laughs> someone that's really well-respected and people know or, you know, make Ben yeah. retire and get him to do it. Like, I don't know, get... You need, <laughs> You need someone with some clout and a name and who has done it to speak for you. Didn't they but. put together like an, like a, like Annie was on it and uh, Meredith. Yeah. Like a, like an athlete board type of deal. Yeah. I think it's still out there, but to your point, you nearly died. You nearly died, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Story of my life. Um, they, yeah. I mean, they have like an athlete board or group I, I mean like I haven't heard anything about that for a really long time like I think I think um Velner and Fikowski like put mm -hmm. that whole thing together and like I think they still like have meetings I know like a girl at my gym and Invictus Jen Ryan like she she's in communications with them I don't really know exactly what they're working towards like right now there was a lot that we you know were really fired up to get done when Eric Rosa first got like sworn in, but like, why'd you say it like I don't know. That? <laughs> well, it's just it's like one of those. I just feel like it's like one of those things where you know it's just like a presidency. You know, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this, and we're all gonna be super happy. And like you know, you give the hundred days, and like nothing's happening, and everyone's just upset. And it's just kind of like one of those things where you know the there are great changes that are going on in CrossFit. Uh, they have like this whole medical program that they're like incorporating into CrossFit now. And I love that. Totally on board with that. They've made it to where like the community is more involved and like, it's awesome. But once again, it's just, and I know the elite athletes of CrossFit is such a small population, but it just always feels like we get shafted with all of these like big decisions, like sanctionals got taken away and it was awesome for the community because like the community then again could do the open together and quarterfinals together and like cheer on their local athletes to go to semifinals and all the professional athletes are like, well, fuck you. Like we wanted to travel and like go and like make money and everything. And everybody else should have wanted that as well but we took all that away because it wasn't the best for the community. And it's always like we get put on the back burner. And I just think it's, I think it's pretty shitty. Um, and I think that CrossFit is so focused on CrossFit being a community, which is great, but you don't see like little league and the majors playing on the same field. Like there's a community, there's a time and a place for everyone to come together, but you know, a professional sport can't be, you know, being fair to the average athlete. It just does. It's not going to work. And so I'm never going to be on like an agreement with all of that. Um, so that's like the whole thing is I think a lot of us were just expecting more. And I think a lot of us that call ourselves professional CrossFit athletes, were just a little disappointed in how everything's turned out. Alec, like, yeah, there, just, there just needs to be like a divide between CrossFit and the CrossFit games. You know, like the CrossFit Games needs to have a board, needs to be more professional. And then CrossFit is the community side of everything. You know, like the CrossFit Games isn't about the community, like CrossFit's about the community, if that makes sense. So there just needs to be like a little more structure in the CrossFit Games instead of like, I don't know, just having one person doing everything and just like having all the focus being on that one person doing everything. Like, I think it needs to be a board of people or a group of people. And like, yeah, a retired athlete would be great. Like Scott would be an awesome example. Or uh, I mean, even Ben, like when he does retire, whatever it is, um, just more people involved would be better. And like, yes, the community is amazing. Like the CrossFit community, this is the reason why like the CrossFit Games is so popular because of the community, but like also like people love CrossFit because of athletes at the CrossFit Games. Like they work together, but there does need to be some separation. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, did I? Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> no, it makes sense to me. Alex, since the, you know, Danny brought it up, but since the change, you know, since Greg's gone and now we've got new guy, Eric, who I guess is no longer new guy. How are you <laughs> feeling about the direction of CrossFit? Feeling better? Same? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't want to do CrossFit a year ago, a year and a half ago when like everything was happening. I was like, I don't want to be like a part of an organization that's led by somebody who was saying the things that he was saying, like, that's not who I am. I don't believe in that. Like the direction is definitely like this year was great. Like noble taking over 
and like the changes that we saw, like, I, I feel like it's getting back to those roots, like CrossFit blew up in like 2013, 14, 15, and then like kind of just like started like declining. And then like a couple years ago, it's just like the CrossFit games, like wasn't even a thing. And like, I definitely think it's on the incline now, like all the changes that have happened and like having new ownership and like a new sponsor taking over, like I'm hoping it gets back onto the incline where it was at. Cause like, if it kept going, like where it was in 13, 14, 15, like it for sure would be a professional sport where, where all of the athletes would be getting paid. Like, you know, like the PGA tour, like there's a bunch of different events where like you can go and make a ton of money. And like, there's a lot of different athletes involved instead of having just like one CrossFit games, you know, like what Danny said earlier, where like the invites only to like Dubai and Rogue this year was kind of sucky. Cause it's like me personally, I didn't go into this year, like feeling physically great. I didn't make the games. And so it's like, I don't have a chance of competing at like these big events throughout year and like i'm sure a lot of athletes are in the same situation like people want it even if it's just like five to ten online spots or whatever it may be like the whole invite thing is just like eh, because it's like whoever owns the competition is can invite whoever they want and then it's just like who knows who and like who has the polls and like who can get invited to these events and it's just i don't know there, there needs to be more structure and like there needs to be more people involved like sitting on a board making these decisions yeah. And I don't, I don't have this problem, but like, I know Alec and I talked about this and Alec, how many years have you competed at Dubai now? Like how many years in a row? Yeah. Like six years in a row. And like, now he just doesn't get to go because he just like, didn't get an invite. Cause he like, couldn't go to the game. Like, it's just like, it's like one of those things where it's like, well, that sucks. Alec has like flown his there six rows to support that competition. And now they're just like, sorry, like, okay. <laughs> I mean, Sorry. I didn't qualify for the games. I understand, but it's not like, like the athletes they are inviting. Like, no offense, the athletes are inviting at all, but it's it's also people who haven't qualified for the games. Like, why are these people getting invites over other people? Like, what's the reasoning behind it? Like, you there was just like, yeah, uh, there's not there's no thing saying like these are the reasons why we just started getting like these names, and yeah. they're like, okay, well, was there did I miss something? Did I miss an email? <laughs> I'm like scrolling through my emails like I I must have missed something (laughs) so it just it's just like shitty and like not even like for us like invites or anything I just think that you know I remember when I first started like just doing the Dubai qualifier was like a fun thing to do in my gym and I think just taking away that opportunity like even if you don't make it people love to do qualifiers for big competitions like that it's like a great way for people to like just compete with their friends and just like there are competitive athletes like within gym spaces and they love to do these kind of qualifiers that like you know could potentially lead to going to a bigger competition and I think it's a mistake to take that away from the community like if you earn a spot you earn a spot but like they're just fun to do with your friends as well I love how you guys are so different on this though where Alex like you know it was kind of sucky and Danny's like those guys can go fuck themselves (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) That's why that's we why get Alec, along. That's why so Alec is like the liked one, and everyone's like, ah, I don't up. know about her. <laughs> <laughs> no, we Alec definitely balance each other out. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he tells me to shut the fuck up, and he's like, shh. shh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's a really interesting topic because I had honestly not considered the fact that these events were that there were no qualifiers. Like I think, and I think most of the community probably thinks like I do. I mean, I'm just an average Joe out here making memes, you know. And so I wasn't thinking about you know, who was going and who wasn't, I'd see the news that, you know, to your point, it's weird who's getting invited. So I saw Ricky got invited to Dubai and that was the hot topic for a few weeks, but it didn't even really occur to me that he was going because it was invite only. Yeah. And so now I'm like sitting here, like trying to process all this going, it does, you know, as a competitive athlete and you guys have a very limited number of events you can go to it, it hurts. Now I, you know, there's the other part of me is like, well, it's, you know, they're, competition to run they have to make money so i understand like they want to bring in who they think will draw in the most tickets but i also think as you know someone who loves the athletes man like you got there's only a half a dozen competitions where there's any real payout yeah Yeah, like what like we were talking about before just it takes away from the professionality of the sport like it's it's not a I don't know. It just like takes away from the serious seriousness of it. Like if they were to have an online qualifier, great. Like let him do the online qualifier. If he, if he qualifies awesome, like he's a great athlete. I just don't think that spot is, I don't think he deserved that spot. Would you be opinion. okay if with like, let's just say Dubai continues to be invite only. Would you be okay with there being 
four to six invite only events, but then another six CrossFit sponsored paid events that you could qualify for. Would that be okay? Like, don't get me wrong. Like what, what I say doesn't matter because Dubai is individually owned. They can do yeah. whatever they want. You well, know what I'm saying? Like, this is just my, my <laughs> all hypothetical. They're going to send a hit squad, Alec. You're fine. <laughs> You're fine. But yeah, I mean, like going back to what we were talking about, the sanctional event, like two years ago, like that was amazing for athletes. Cause there are so many different opportunities for us to go and choose like where we wanted to compete or like what we wanted to do. But now it's like, what is it like? Wadapalooza, the games, Dubai and Rogue rogue yeah those are like the big ones and like i don't know crossfit took over granite games they took over west coast classic those are now like regionals or semifinals, whatever they called them this year um there's really not many competitions like wadapalooza is the only one i can think of that like had qualifiers like got everybody involved and like has a prize purse big enough like to put time and effort into like training and competing for like there's there's nothing really else other than wadapalooza right now but, to Alex's yeah. point, like to, if you have like these events that are like invite only, and then we say like, okay, well there's invite only. And then there's ones that you can qualify for. Well, everyone wants to go and try to qualify for Rogue. Everyone wants to go and try to qualify for Dubai. And then, so you have this separation where it's just like, again, like you're just saying like, well, we're just going to invite who we want to. And it becomes like this like clicky group. And it's like, I get that we just said that we want to like have professional like side of CrossFit over here and the community side over here but doing that like an invite only you're taking away a lot of opportunities for up and coming athletes because no one's gonna like those events aren't gonna be like looking through and be like oh this person could be good let's give her a shot or give him a shot at this thing they'll always invite the old games athletes like that'll always be a case and I doubt that if you have like six events that are invite only and then six events that are, you can qualify for those ones that are like, aren't invite only tell me who's going to pay $50,000 for first place. Like all these other events, like there's no way to make money. If you have like these small little competitions, they're like, Oh yeah, everyone can play. Well, I'm not going to go in. I, I just, me personally, and I know a lot of other athletes feel this way. No one's going to go and compete and wreck our bodies for three or four days for even like a five grand first place. It's not, not enough money for us to travel there, compete, try like stay in a place. It's just, it's not worth it. And so you have to have like a big enough price purse. And I doubt the CrossFit's going to like pay that out. Well, that's to what, like the, that's what the Mac was paying like two years ago, Danny. You know what the, wasn't that the prize at the Mac that I met you at? That, yes. That was the year that I, like, that was the sanctioned year where I was like, right. I'm going to go to every single one of these competitions because I knew like at the time, like I, I was an up and coming athlete. Like that was my year to like have my breakout year and get my name in everybody's fucking mouth. And that's what I did. I was like, I'm going to go to every single one that I can. And so it didn't, for me, like that year wasn't about like really making money. It was about establishing myself enough to where I could start making money within the sport. So like, that was like the goal of that year. And like, they took that away from any person who was like in my shoes. So someone who's like right there, like ready to have their breakout year, they got to, they just don't have opportunities to do it. And especially if they're not getting paid, like they've got one shot now, the games, and like, let's be honest, like everyone focuses on like the top athletes. It's just, it's just like what happens. Like it's more, it's, it's more fun. I'll say it. Like it just right. is, unless you have like one event, like, you know, a max snatch, if you're a strong athlete, you can go in there and you can like put on a show like in the Coliseum. But if you're just like a good, well-rounded athlete and you like end, you know, 15th, you're not going to get a lot of media time. So even if you have a great season, make it to the CrossFit games, you're still not going to get enough media for people to like care. And that's shitty. That's just shitty. I hope what you guys are experiencing is just the growing pains of a 15 year old sport. You know what I mean? Like, like, (laughs) I'm not, I'm not, I'm not defending anyone or attacking anyone here. It's just like, I, I, we just, I, we just talked to Chase Ingram uh, on the other show the other night. And he and I were talking about this, like, you know, the sport's only been around 15 years. Like, you know, the NFL, That's baby. Yeah. You know, it's a major baby league baseball is like 200 years old. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, we have to give them yes. a little grace and to like, you know, figure out how this should be done. And we really give them a lot of grace. Like we really do. And like, I get it. Like, this is me just like talking about like all these like pain points, but yeah, like, 
all these other professional sports have had years to get it together. Like when all these other sports just started, like they didn't have shit either. I get it. I'm just hoping that like the future generations will have a better go at it. Well, like, not, I'm not thinking they have about that. like if my kids eventually want to do CrossFit, they get paid to do it and they don't just have these old man knees for nothing. Well, now that they have that monster energy money, all bets are off, right? <laughs> <laughs> man. Uh, curious monster how much they energy. paid for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love cringing. it. I cringing. love it for so many reasons, but mostly just because I got a lot of memes out of they it. They should have <laughs> just had Coke sponsor the game just to stick it to Greg. Like, <laughs> Jesus, like that. I feel like that. I just didn't like, I didn't like that. I didn't like Monster Energy sponsoring. Oh, wait, we have new new puppies on the show. Is this the new one? Yeah, this is Barley. Look at that baby. Oh, I know. He's, he's the sweetest dog, too. He's a big he's boy. Like, he's so sweet. He's going to oh. be. He's, he's only five months old. Oh, well, I thought it. Yeah, I thought he was a puppy and he walked in and he looked like a full grown dog. I'm like, holy yeah. crap. He's so large. <laughs> I, I had to text Riley to tell him to grab my computer charger because I'm at 2% right now. So that's why he's in here. Oh. Help. <laughs> he's so cute. Yeah. I want I want a dog bad, but Bean would not have it. Not really? Yeah, yeah, no. He would get used to it. I I'm not sure he's used to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> look at that baby. Yeah, no, he he's sitting next you to me. Right to now, get, just... Maybe if you got like a little like a little a little doodle of some sort, like a mini doodle, so mm. it wasn't too intimidating. It's like you dip his toes into the dog world. I don't know. We've had dogs around here before, and not only does does his hair go up but he starts growling like he's a dog which is really funny by the way and then he and then he stalks them like he doesn't back he doesn't go hide like you think a cat should like he stalks them around the house and won't let them in rooms he's he's me my cat my cat was that like that when like my dog cat first got introduced and now they play and they sleep together and they love each other you just got to give them it's like you gotta just give them a month and be like, listen, no one's anywhere. You gotta be a family. <laughs> you just gotta figure it out, guys. And they do eventually. All right. Or well, they don't, and they'll just kill you in your sleep, John. It's like- All right. I had a few <laughs> more questions on my list here, my well prepared list. And since we're talking about killing athletes, how's your ankle? I haven't talked to you since you heard it. It's good. It's getting there. I got so I've been getting like PRP injections um, to like strengthen up that ligament. Uh, I had one ligament that's just it's gone. It's out of there. So I'm trying to like strengthen the other one to make sure that like I can still like do stuff. Um, not going to get surgery for a while. I thought I was going to have to, uh, not going to do that. So that's awesome. I have like a lot of bone fragments that are like floating around in there. I don't think I need to go clean those up either. So it's looking pretty good. This week was actually, well, I guess it's a new week. So last week was my first week of doing any kind of like running and jumping and everything. So it was like a big week for me um but yeah it's feeling pretty great i'm hoping i'm going to be like close to 100 percent by the time wadapalooza comes around so that's good i yeah. when you when you heard it at the games i had uh dozens of people were messaging and go what's wrong with danny message her and find out she's okay i'm like no <laughs> no like you don't message someone when they're injured at the event that they have dreamed of getting to like seriously oh just let them take a minute and process i'm like i won't talk to her for weeks until she's ready to talk about it and then typically was- you know like Next was, couple of days you were laughing and smiling again, but still. yeah, you, you gotta like brush it off. Like, you know, being an athlete, like injuries happen, but like, yeah, those first couple of days was like, it was like rough. Um, and backstory of like, so this is shitty. So in 2019, like I, I was going in with like really bad ankle issues. And that was the year that we had like 12 running events back to back to back to back. And I was like, awesome that's great. And then as soon as I got cut, all the CrossFit started happening. And I was like, Oh, cool. So (laughs) in 2020, right before the game started, I, uh, like was doing double unders, stepped on my own foot and just completely fucked my ankle again, like two weeks before the game started. So I was like, awesome. And then of course we had like events, like running and jumping events. And I just like, my ankle wasn't ready for it. So I didn't go to the ranch. So here we go. Three years in a row. (laughs) I fuck up my ankle now at the CrossFit game. So it was just like, I had, I had a whole meltdown. I had a whole meltdown. So it was rough. It was pretty rough for a couple of days after that. 
And it's always, it's always really hard because I feel like I always get to a point where I like, I suffer through the events that I'm just like, I just have to like, I just have to get through these events. And then the fun starts and it happened again. Like I was like seriously sitting in bed with like a pint of Ben and Jerry's like watching the snatch event. And I was like, these bitches can't even snatch two. I can go power snatch 205. I was furious. I was having, I was all in my head. I was like having emotions, but yeah, three days later I was like, eh, life. I'll be there next year. So you just, you have to kind of like, you know, get it over with. It's I had just, to have my cry days. I'm over it. I'm smiling again. It's just funny to me how people, and I think they probably do this to you too, Alex, but how they get connected to you guys as athletes through your social media. And then they feel like they have such access to you. They feel entitled to message people and go, Oh, check on Danny right now. Check on Alec right now. And I'm like, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> Like, you know, yeah, it's kind of a good and a bad thing, I guess. You know, when you think about it, they love you so much. They just want to know right away, but those boundaries are weird. It's really weird to yeah. me. Yeah, it's, it's weird. We do put a lot out on social media. So I know a lot of people just kind of feel like, oh, like they just want to know, like they're genuinely, like they genuinely care and they're curious. But again, it is like one of those boundary things. Like I've had several moments where I'm like, I, people just forget, I think they forget almost like that you're, like you're human. Like there was like, um, it was 2019. I had just gotten done with Mary and I had known immediately that I hadn't done what I had needed to do to be able to like not get cut. And some girl like grabbed my shoulder and was like, can I get a picture? And like, I'm walking off, like knowing that I'm like out of the competition. So I'm like, not in the mindset. And she was like, can I get a picture? And I was like, Hey, like, please just like, find me, find me later. Like, I'm going to come back to the venue tomorrow, but like, I'm just not in the headspace. And she straight up, she was just like, why are you being such a bitch? And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, fuck dagger to the heart. Like, let's just like add it up right now. <laughs> so oh, they forget. God. I think they forget that like, you know, you're a human. You're not just like this, like this machine athlete thing. I'm, um, I'm surprised that was your reaction. I figured you'd go, Oh, you, okay. You want to see the bitch? <laughs> i know Here any other time i would have but i just like i i just started crying i was like oh uh -huh. you go fuck <laughs> i just like had to run to the bathroom like my hands were ripped and i'm just like crying i'm just like i can't do this right now <laughs> like i'm a big i'm like a big tough girl until like i'm just not <laughs> mm -hmm. i want to see that actually alec you're doing far more um i've really enjoyed watching you do more and more posts with you and riley and because mm -hmm. I, he came on the air earlier, Danny, right before you came on. And I said to him, I'm like, I kind of feel like I know you because I keep seeing you online, you know, yeah. even though I've never really met him. How's that progression been for you guys? Like, you know, being, you know, more and more open about your relationship and doing posts together. And like your last one on coming out day was really cute. Like, <laughs> how's that been for you? Yeah. I mean, I've never been happier. Um, the past like two years have been like the best being able to just like live with him now and like just like be myself and be open with like my family and the community here it's like it's been super great um social media wise it's been like sucky just because you know how like people are and like you know how half of america is and like a lot of the crossfit community too like anytime i ever post a picture with riley i will immediately lose like two to three thousand followers in a day and i'm not exaggerating like it's insane but i mean the amount of like love and support that i got like is way more than that. Like the number of followers, like it's whatever I could care less. Like I used, there was a point in my life where I like cared so much about that and like wanted more followers so I could get sponsors and get paid. And like, now that I'm like in that position, it's like happiness comes first, you know? And like, I'm, I've never been more happy than I am now. And like number of followers doesn't really matter. Like the amount of people who reached out saying like, I don't know, like they came out to their parents because of like the posts and like they see my life and that I'm able to live like a happy life open and like being myself is like it's the best I'll like read it and it'll just like make my day like it's it's so great I don't even know how to describe it like I'm I kind of like I'm at a loss for words whenever I talk about it just because it's like it's awesome oh, that's great dude I'm Danny, gonna yeah. cry again yeah. <laughs> here I go <laughs> so Danny give you give your opinion is there a better looking couple on the internet than those two fuck fuck <laughs> No, no. It, and it, it pisses so me off. Awesome. It They're makes so, me mad, right? Yeah, oh it makes God. me mad how pretty you guys are together. Like their every, faces I'm like, are so symmetrical, and their hair yeah. is always perfect. <laughs> and they both got, got like eight packs, and they're like beautiful bronze gods. And I'm like, yeah, okay. they look like they like, walk characters. out of like a Greek mythology book, and you're like, chill yeah. out. <laughs> like we we can't have you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is okay, ne sad. next topic. Next topic. Let's no, move look, on. I'm just saying, you guys, you guys should both give up CrossFit. 
<laughs> and start auditioning for superhero movies because you both look like superheroes. Just, you know, you're already wearing honestly, the Speedos. I, Why I not? love it when I get those DMs mm-hmm. and they're just like, you should have been Captain Marvel. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like if I love that acting, easy, I love, but it I know happen. right exactly if I had any <laughs> acting skills at all I'd totally try well, <laughs> but so speaking of uh, spooky it. season what are you going as for Halloween this is this is your jam Danny I know so I have like several I have like several ideas um one I have like this cute have you guys seen squid game I finally watched squid game Alan. I know you don't spoil it. it don't I'm I'm like six episodes in don't spoil Ooh. it how are you doing anything right now if you're six episodes in you gotta finish the last three episodes I I, st- I was watching I paused an episode to come do this with you oh I feel really I would have I would have told us to fuck off I've been like yeah, hey, well, I have mm-hmm. way more important things to be doing right now maybe um okay well I found I found like the mask like the little like square triangle mask. square yeah. yeah yeah oh i would definitely be a square <laughs> i feel like there's going to be so many people dressed as that for halloween yes absolutely but like, i just want to do a photo shoot with it i'm not like okay. they actually yeah. go into, like and then so i found like this girl like locally in san diego that does like this amazing like makeup stuff and she did this um really cool venom one and so i reached out to her mm-hmm. and i was like can you come do that to my face and she said yes so i think i'm actually gonna like go out and do that because like the makeup is just so awesome so I'm gonna like put oh. on a cute little black outfit. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. What, what about you? you're not you're not coming to Rogue, Danny? No. Because it's a, it's the same weekend. <laughs> exactly. Well, it, that one was invite only, and they told me to go fuck myself. So. <laughs> what about you, Alec? You guys got any Halloween plans? Well, we're gonna be at Rogue, so no. Are you gonna dress up? Right Wait, stands? I'm, I'm gonna be at Rogue. We get to hang out yeah we should oh, when is halloween oh, sunday night or saturday night sunday night well i'm only there friday saturday i have to go back sunday i have a real I job it, i think it's I sunday gotta work. i think it's sunday Alex. is it yeah. yeah i don't have any plans just because i knew i was going to be there but i'm sure we're going to go out for halloween night but i don't have a costume yet all right hey. we're, we're hanging at some couple? at some point we're is hanging riley out going? i got i gotta meet riley anyway yeah i'll be there yeah yeah riley will be there you guys should do a couple's costume what are you guys gonna do you could do like uh Batman and Robin. Yeah. I'm dying <laughs> to know who's going to be Robin in that relationship. We like just started watching, uh, um, oh gosh, some TV last night that like Robin in it. I think that's why I said that. The Titans. What is no, it? Titan, it's on HBO. Oh, yeah. Titans. It's great. Titans. We just started the first episode of season one, but. Oh, yeah. I gotta go check it out. You could out. be Nightwing. You, you kind of look like Nightwing. You, you got the dark hair. Out. Be perfect yeah. for you. Yeah. 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 Perfect. I'll be Nightwing. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, I have no Halloween plans. I won't be dressing up. I, may, I might go as Eric Rosa. I kind of already have the look. Could be perfect. There you yeah. go. Perfect. I, I'm not fit enough to be Eric Rosa. I couldn't pull that look off. <laughs> not even close. He's not here, John. You don't have to suck up. <laughs> no. Well, you, you never know. Who's he probably watching. won't block you. He's not that mean. So, mm. like, we don't have to. We don't have to do that. I get all the best blocks. I've had all the good ones so far. <laughs> you are on a roll and i'm here for it <laughs> i know that's not that's not eric's jam though he doesn't like he doesn't seem the type to block people no he well he's just like more open like he doesn't care about like the criticisms i'm sure he'll actually like read them and be like I, give first it of all i did not give criticism to castro he not even you? once yeah he blocked yeah. me <laughs> <laughs> here's, i have a shirt that says, that says it too oh that's right you do <laughs> look here's the thing like i did not criticize him as a matter of fact i have gone out of my way on every podcast and as often as i can on the page to say how much i like his programming and respect him as the guy that runs crossfit games like i've done that multiple times many times when i did not even believe it myself but I had to do it, right? You got to kiss the ring. You must kiss the ring. And then one day I just looked up and I was blocked. And I think it's because I pissed off his buddy. That was, mm. that was my theory. Mm. So I feel like the only people that should get blocked are like, I don't know, racist, homophobes, like just mean people. Like the point of mean blocking people. somebody for like, yeah. I, I mean, the amount of people that I've blocked is insane, like probably thousands by now, but it's just like yeah. they deserved it. You know, they like said something that was like super offensive. But I mean, if you you're blocking someone just because it makes you like hurts your feelings. Yeah. Know. Like yeah. if I was going to block people who just hurt my feelings or like could have hurt my feelings, I would have three followers. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'd have to block everybody. <laughs> like I, I really save the blockings for like the people who consistently want to send me their ball sack. <laughs> that's Those a blockable guys. offense. Oh, that's sorry. Offense. My bad. My bad. I wondered <laughs> why I, was, I wondered why I wasn't seeing your stuff. <laughs> Damn it. Oh well. Now I know. Oh well. You can just get another page. Yeah. That's how they slip through the cracks. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, this has been fun, guys. Our first yes. inaugural no name episode. Always. No name. Maybe that's just what we go with it. No name. Maybe. Episodes. I'll come up with something. I'll name it. We're going to put it out on YouTube and all the same channels. And then all we have to do is figure out how often we want to do it. So cool. maybe Let we'll the people do- decide. They're probably going to be like, never again, please. <laughs> <laughs> if, you get, if you let the people decide, they're going to ask for far too much. So it's a dangerous proposition. Okay. You're, you're right. <laughs> but true, for now, true. Let's, lo- let's loosely say maybe a couple of times a month would probably get it done once a month. Like, we'll see how it feels. How about that? Perfect. We only were trying to get this done for two, three months. So we're on a really <laughs> good trend. We're on a great schedule. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I will let you guys get back about your life. Alec, I will see you in Austin. Yep. Yep. Coming up quick. Yep. Tell Riley, we're getting a formal introduction. Perfect. And uh, Danny, since you're not invited, I guess you can just fuck off, I guess. Yep. Um, I will. (laughs) Hopefully, hopefully we'll see you soon too. Yes, I'm sure. I'll come bug you guys. All right. Thanks guys. Peace out. Bye. Bye.